Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another one of my course vlogs. Now we're out here in Los Angeles at Griffith Park and we're playing the Wilson Golf Course today. It's the better and longer of the two out here. If you've never been out here, this is the one to play. Hey, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe down below. I'd love to have you back here week after week. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so I know you're out there. Hey, let's head on out to the first hole, long par five down the hill. It's gettable, let's go. The first hole starts here by the clubhouse and it serves two golf courses here at Griffith Park, the Wilson and the Harding course. Obviously named after two dead presidents, here the Wilson course is the longer and more championship of the two. It's got a black tee sitting back at about 7,000 yards and that's what we're going to tackle today. A long, narrowing par 5 here as it snakes around to the left as we approach the green. About 150 yards out here, you can see the green finally appear up on the right-hand side. After you flatten out down there, it will raise back up the hill to a slightly elevated green. Now, and like most of the greens out here, just tiny little circles. Now I'm attempting to cut the corner and play right over that single solitary pine tree. And well, I guess you could say it's mission accomplished. The ball was just next to the car path over here and well over to the left hand side. Just under 200 yards left to the green after a massive tee shot. And I was able to hit a 7 iron up there to the middle of the green. Very, very soft conditions out here this morning, though, and that ball zipped back down to the front of the green, leaving myself 60 feet for eagle and up there to about six feet for birdie. I'm able to convert, just barely lipping that in on the low side, and we can drop down one under par after that first par five. Now, there's a lot of par fours out here, only one par three on this entire front nine. And this par four second hole is awesome. Up and over the hill, like completely blind tee shot for you. Use the trees beyond the hill as your sight lines, knowing that they are on the far left hand side of the fairway. Push your tee shot well off to the right and it's okay. And you'll have a good angle down this corridor of trees, slightly down the hill and into this green. Only one bunker there on the left-hand side should not come into play. Now here I turned this ball over a little bit too much and played it right down that tree line. It hit the top of the trees and knocked right down. About 130 yards here to the center of the green. I'm playing a smooth gap wedge out of this fluffy Kakuya lie. The grass out here is difficult if you haven't played it before, especially in the morning. Man, it can get wet and dewy. These greens just wouldn't roll out for me. You can see they were healing from a punch at the time and they were rolling okay, but just not quite perfectly. But nothing I can't complain about. Able to roll in the five foot par putt to salvage that par and really validate that birdie on the first hole. Now the only par three on the entire front nine plays right back up the hill. So 191 yards from the tips, plays about 200 yards adjusted with that hill. That's a six iron for me. Hitting this one, it nearly looked pin high where you had to climb the hill to see how close it really would be and it zipped back just about 20 feet under the hole. You can't really ask for much else. A very good look and just off that low lip. You know, that's how the first putt went in on the low lip. It's, man, I'm gonna have to start reading a little bit more break in these greens than I'm seeing. Now this fourth hole is another par four. Dropping off the elevated tee all you're gonna see is that lake. That's all you need to contend with. In addition to that bunker on the right, just lay it back where you saw those carts. Leave yourself about 125 yards into this green. There's nothing else up at the green except the nice hills around it. And uh, yeah, it's just a bunch of green grass. Come on, hit it close. So we're laying back off the tee. I was a little frustrated with that tee shot. It was a five iron that I'd slightly yanked over to the left, but this is a big wide playing corridor down there. 
left myself a little bit more than I thought. This is about 150 yards, and I'm playing a full pitching wedge back to this flag and just tugged it a little bit. Here in the fluffy stuff, pin high on the left, I was able to get a good chip on it, nearly hold it out, and ultimately just walked on up there with the wedge and tap it in from two feet for a comfy tap-in par. And we can head across the street and over to the fifth hole. You got nine holes on each side of the street, so they kind of play a little bit unique. Over here, this next nine hole, starting with the fifth, is a very flat terrain over by the freeway. As opposed to the other nine holes, the start and the end of the round plays around a lot of those hilly mounds. Now, this is a severe dogleg to the right. No bunkers to be had up there at the green, so just pick your line properly and you can get yourself really close to the green, which I did not do. I played it well off to the left, thinking I can hit some big fancy cut. I should have just tried to hit a straight shot over the corner, but it didn't work out for me. Straight through the fairway and on the cart path. I took my drop, had to play a low punch shot, and just did not get it up all the way to the green. Another one I'm gonna have to get up and down from the fluffy stuff, but this one sat really well. I nearly thought I could hole it out for birdie, but it's another one down there for a comfy tap-in par. Number two, that's two in a row with the wedge. All right, now we got the sixth hole. Another dog leg to the right, but not nearly as severe as number five. This one's got a little bit more distance to it as well. Barely playing up the hill. This one's going to play pretty much true to its number. It's all about the distance here. If you cut the corner properly, you will have a good look to this green that is decently protected by some hilly terrain and that bunker on the right. You're noticing here about this course, it's all about the setup. If you have a good angle to the green, you can score. Now I played that comfortable fade off the tee, just a good five to 10 yard fade, a little bit left to right and right down Broadway. A little knockdown sand wedge here from just under 100 yards and it's the same fate as the previous holes. Where I just yanked it a little bit to the left. Nothing I'd like to see with my wedges. I'm trying to get the feel of those down. But again, I tried to get up and down with the wedge, but this one definitely rolled out a little bit too far. I had to take the, the flat stick out for this one. About 10 feet? Nah, it's less than that for par. Par after par after par is what I like to see out on these Muni golf courses. They're right in front of you. Keep the ball in front of you, and the scores will stay low. Now, Finally, a dog leg to the left after a few to the right. Another par four here with number seven. It's got plenty of distance to it at over 400 yards, but man, does it really neck down. When it narrows down, it also drops down about two to three yards down the hill. Another little saucer green just protected on one side by a bunker. Now over there on the right is I-5, and I did not slice this out onto the freeway, but it was down the right-hand side of the hole. Another one that I missed the fairway and had to play a little punch shot out of the fluffy stuff. I couldn't quite get the right amount of spin on this shot towards that back hole location, and just had to play it to the front of the green and take my medicine and take the par. Now the last par four here on the front nine after a ton of them in a row is a little bit different than all the rest again. This golf course is fantastic. If you live in the area, try to come out here and get a tee time. Good luck getting a tee time, but try. Do your best you possibly can. And if not, just come on out here and wait. You can stand by as a single anytime you want. Now this long par four eighth hole is all about positioning. You've got to be on the right hand side to give yourself an angle to this green to get around that big tree that protects it on the front left. No bunkers up there are necessary. It's all about angles here. And so naturally I take it way down the left hand side of this hole, the worst angle you could possibly have. So we gotta go up, way up. Luckily, I got that shot. I had about 140 yards to the flag and I could take my 135 yard club and just play it to the front right. 
it was pin high, and another one that I tried to get up and down from the fluffy stuff and had absolutely no problem doing so. That's the third time I've got to use my wedge just to tap in those little comfy pars. There's nothing I like better after hitting a chip shot than not having to hit a putt. Now finally, we got something a little bit different. A very long and dynamic par 5 here, almost 600 yards, and it plays a little bit uphill as well. It's nearly straight off the tee. It's going to start bending at about the 260, 275 yard mark around that big tree, and then all you got in front of you as it slowly climbs the hill all the way to the green, it's going to play about five to six yards adjusted in total. Now, as we get up to the green, it is a well protected for a par five bunkers down the right. And if you miss on the left, it's a little bit of an elevated surface and it could kick it down and away from the green. Now, after hitting the cut all day long off the tee, I decided to hit the draw and just straight hooked it into the trees. And well, sometimes they say the shot that gets you into trouble is the shot that gets you out of trouble. So another hook, a little punch hook off the pine straw there, gets it back out into the fairway and I had plenty left, about 202 yards up the hill. That was a full send six iron that got all the way up to the green. That was one of my best shots of the day. Leave myself another birdie putt under the hole and makeable on a par five. Oh, you gotta hit it up the hill, Brett. You gotta hit it up the hill. Well, you always miss 100% of the putts that you leave short, don't you? Subscribe, and we'll see you next time for the back nine. Later. <laughs>